Hello, everyone out there in cyberland. <laughs> Welcome to the third installment uh, of the remaking of The Price is Right. No, uh, so happy you could join. Uh, I'm trusting you're there. I can see no one uh, on my computer, but hopefully you can see and hear us. Uh, Larry Grenadier joining. So happy to play with Larry again. It's just been too long. We've actually had the chance to play twice in one week. One week. Unbelievable. <laughs> After f 10, 15 years <laughs> during a pandemic. So yeah, Larry, great, yeah, to, great, to, great to play again. And uh, thank you for coming over. Uh, and uh, that was uh, long ago and far away. And uh, we're going to continue with one of my songs called Elegia, and um, I hope you enjoy here at the uh, control panel. Uh, there's no escaping the screen.
ok
So that was uh, Saida's song flute by John Coltrane and um, from his Giant Steps record. And uh, so cool to revisit that and uh, play. I was just reflecting. Uh, I just had this flashback of Bradley's. You probably played. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, the duo thing <laughs> yeah so great and by that time it was also trio you know by yes the, by the 90s. right right anyway yeah it's a fun format and terrifying yeah. <laughs> it's all on you no drummer yeah. uh anyway um we're gonna continue with some more music um my man's sure george gershwin my man's gone now and uh, Larry has a beautiful version of this on his uh, solo album, uh, The Gleaners, right? And uh, anyway, Larry's going to kick it off, play some My Man's Gone now.
That was Sippin' at Bells, Miles Davis. And, um, yeah, I thought I was wrong in the beginning. I thought it was Bird. But, uh, well, it might be. <laughs> no, I think it's probably, it sounds like a Miles melody. But, um, anyway, um, yeah, we have some more time. Uh, we'll play, uh, what was, we were talking about, um, Benny Golson. Yeah. Yeah. Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for your support um, and hanging out this evening. Hope you're having a great Saturday and a safe one. And uh, this has been super fun to invite my, my friends, my old friends over to play some music. It's been a long time and um, nice opportunity uh, in the midst of all this that we're going through. Okay, uh, here's some Benny Golson.
That was uh, Larry, Larry, <laughs> Gold, that's my Goldings. <laughs> Too much Goldings on the brain <laughs> these days. <laughs> it was not Larry Goldings, it was Larry Grenadier. Hi, Larry, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was the Gleaner from Larry's beautiful solo album. And uh, yeah, how about a glass of, a drink, a little slip of wine for that. Um, that microphone. Is it Got on? it. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Yeah, Great man. to play with you after oh. a long time, long Two. space. Yeah, long time. You know, I was thinking the other day because we played oh, about a week ago for a second. Mm -hmm. But really, you know, we played with Bill Stewart, and uh, one of the first you you and Bill were some of the first guys I met in New York. Mm. Um, I remember playing playing at your pad many many times different configurations but a lot with bill um but it was kind of our um our way of not dealing with jam sessions that we created our own <laughs> <right>? <laughs> <laughs> you know as, yeah as, as a bass player it is i hated jams going to jam sessions mm. but it was so great why <laughs> <laughs> why would that be <laughs> 
too many too yeah, many yeah. choruses yeah <laughs> you're right you know yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't the best for me it wasn't the best way to, to meet people but no. um no really through you and bill and, and a whole cast of characters <laughs> um you know it kind of was my entry into playing with people my own age in new york mm. which was such a big deal coming from you know more of where i was playing musicians right man well, so when you came, what, so what year did you come to Nin New York? 91. 91. So you were, you were already. Hold the mic a little bit. Oh, you were already ensconced. Yeah, you, you were <laughs> deep in it. Uh -huh. We used to play out in Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. Right. You don't remember. Our first, <laughs> our first so it yeah. was a session at my house. No, I don't remember the first, but, but I remember. <clears throat> no, of course. I, I think I met you through Bill, po possibly. Makes sense, yeah. Um, but I'm not even sure how I met really yeah uh we were both at a, a jazz camp together but we didn't have much contact but um uh -huh. we were there at the same time yeah, yeah. that would have been stan uh, yeah at stanford, stanford it would have been a, you know 83 or something like this wow you know right and Before you guys are, are you guys exactly the same age or pretty much right? well i think so years? i think we graduated high school both in 84 I okay think. yeah yeah it was like a couple years younger yeah uh, 86 yeah i can tell yeah <laughs> i was pretty scrawny uh when we <laughs> met yeah i wasn't eating a lot. i wasn't eating enough really right um n nervous the nerves i suppose <laughs> it's great for weight weight uh, ma maintenance <laughs> right it, it's a great it was diet. A, you know new york was an intense place man i mean i just uh well you yeah, know i mean you, you you know what i remember is that you and bill and and Chris Potter, who I met around the same time, mm -hmm. and Brad at the same time. I mean, right. all around this 91-ish time. Right. You guys were also, to my ears, were so fully formed and had your, not only could um, deal on m many levels, but you also had your own voice already, which to me was kind of shocking. Wow, well, thank you very much. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a shock to hear that. <laughs> 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 no, I felt so, so formative and so like, oh. but I, I just, you know, I mean, the uh you know just listening to all the records that i loved in high school and a little bit before that and just you know eating this stuff for breakfast with like <laughs> dexter gordon and like just you know like uh and of course um when i left to go to well i, I went to manhattan for a brief time uh in 86 after graduating high school and you know but i had met the cool thing was i met a lot of musicians like still in high school uh-huh yeah in new york and and uh there was this guy don sickler uh who's sure. you know kind of a, a new york institution sort of jazz. Sure. and i mean i i you know i met all these incredible people there i mean i i met hank mobley wow. at at uh, don's place and wow actually hank uh corrected my turnaround on tune-up I don't know what I was playing, but I didn't, pl he, he was showing, he sat down and showed me the right changes. Really? So wow. I was like, wow, man. And, um, but, but Don, uh, Don, as, as you know, is like, you know, big into publishing and, and, uh, he, he, he was, uh, really introducing me to a ton of music and that he would published, uh -huh. particularly a Kenny Dorham right. music, you know, and it's just incredible stuff. So, right. La Mesa and all these escapades. Yeah. Yeah. Just so much. I mean, I learned so much. Right, such you know, a unique voice or a compositional voice too, right? Like kind of a, another way of composing, a new way of composing that kind of Joe Henderson kind of huh. developed further, maybe, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, so voice. rich, yeah. so rich, and um, sort of not. I don't know how much people are playing him anymore. You right. know, his right. music. I mean, For just sure. an incredible book. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, people can get lost, you know. It's funny now that hmm. I teach quite a bit, I see the uh what people consider standards, you know, and it's um right. it's kind of somewhat generational or or you know, lo location oriented, but right. yeah, so many things can fall through the cracks or they'll just play a few of like like Joe Henderson, they might just play a couple of his tunes. Yeah. You know, or uh, I mean so many examples, but or Wayne even, you know, Wayne they'll just play kind of the hits. Yeah. And um uh, yeah, but. I remember learning, you know, stuff from Wayne's early VJ records, you mm. know, like uh, Harry's Last Stand. Yeah, you I, know, I, I remember playing that with you. Did we play it yeah. together? 
I just love those records. I mean, of course, you know, Wynton Kelly was just like so mm. huge for me. And uh, I believe he's on that record. I think so. You know, but a real transition. I mean, it's coming out of that you know, our Blakey yeah. era, but it's something is already changing, right? Yeah. That, that you see the next step of, of Wayne's compositional kind of right. growth. I mean, remarkable also. To, yeah, to, to see that or sort of yeah, see that arc or that transformation for right. me. Like we were talking, I, Chris, uh, Potter was here last week and we we're just talking about Wayne and and uh you know our our sort of first exposure to him and I mean I I, I kind of probably worked backwards I mean I think the first record mm. I heard was was Juju you know and that that just wrecked me wow you know but that's just, not too far back I mean that's uh, for me that's it was, true it was like weather report you know and I remember okay. the first time I really um had a sense of who he was was when he played this solo version of thanks for the memory I don't know if you remember that on, on record 830, a live record, where yeah. that was his solo tune, you know? And I just, I, I love that tune, and I love just the way he, like, vocalized it. It was so, like, human and so mm. from from the soul. And, and then I had to go back. I mean, I probably, heard, I heard him with, actually, I heard him with Miles first. Okay. But, you know, I, I didn't know what the hell I was hearing. <laughs> actually, yeah. So abstract. So abstract at yeah. that age, but you dig it on some level. Right. And we still love it on that same level. It's some, but we know a lot more now, yeah. That's the thing, I think, with, you know, just talking about Wayne. I mean, he's so unique for me in that way as a horn player. I mean, it's kind of, I mean, Miles probably would be uh, comparable just in mm. terms of the, the, this idea of, a, of, a, of a, like a human voice, like somehow right. managing to come through. Right. That, that was so... Um, so unique to to wayne and uh just like uh he's like you know you hear um i don't know the cry of a of a baby or something it's just yeah, incredible so human right and yeah and the, yeah yeah and 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 beyond you know as you sort of learn more about his sort of um if right. if there's a if there's a wayne philosophy i don't know but you know i mean beyond the the beyond the the immediate uh solar system perhaps you know for sure you know just bringing all of this stuff together this is very very uh very deep obviously there was something that actually that you could relate because you've played with with sunny and with uh joe henderson but to me the three of them the way they kind of had this syntax to their um hmm. phrasing to me was really kind of it, you kind of unified them at least in my head at hmm. the time of uh, like as if they were writing very contemporary fr uh, sentences you know like the way they would put in a comma or a semicolon or something like th it wasn't like it was another way of phrasing post bebop you know it was very vocal like the way s people speak you mm. know and i found that with with joe for sure too where it, it, it w the rhythm would kind of go in ways that maybe were uh, you know a surprise yeah like there'd be parentheses or, uh, you know, thought the sentence was, uh, sentence was over, but it's not over. Right. You know, and Sonny is also, I mean, obviously the master of that. These yeah. long phrases that are. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember playing once uh, with Sonny and all of a sudden I heard Joe. And I was like, wait, that's Joe Henderson. Right. <laughs> you know? And, uh. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. That's that's where that's coming from. Right. You know, and, uh, and I love that. I love that. You yeah. hear it. It's subtle, but it, it's in there. It's like hearing Stan Getz and Joe Henderson. You know, it's in yes. There, right? There's this moment I did. My first album was Joe. I got I was able to get Joe on it, and it was just so thrilling. And I I, I wrote this. Uh, I was getting into Paul Hindemith at the time, and uh, he had this beautiful uh, orchestral piece, and. Uh, Nobilissima Visione is the name of the short, like wow. tone poem uh, kind of thing, and you know, and I, I, I transcribed it in the most like, I mean, I basically wrote it out, you know, with like thirty second notes and stuff. It was insane, but Joe, I mean, it was a ballad, right? And Joe just dealt with it so thoroughly, and there's this moment in it where it is this moment where he plays. Like it's an E minor chord. And he just, he's incredible. I remember, I remember uh, Bill's on that record, and I remember playing it. We were, we were playing it back. I was like, dude, that's that gets yeah. it, and it's so beautiful. And yeah. uh, 
Yeah, I love that. Um, th- yeah, this kind of cross yeah, pollination because you th- you don't think about it so much because you're so into their what they do, you know, mm-hmm. and you're just like, oh, that's Joe Henderson, you know. Right. I was so into Sonny before really hearing Joe that I was a little like irked or something. I was like, because I'd be the first record I heard Joe's contemporary, you know, like at the time, you know, with Ron and Al. Right. And I was like. I remember uh, alto player John Gordon introduced me to that, those records, and I was like, "What's this? You know, this is taking Sonny's thing." You know, I was like, "Yeah, this is like Sonny Light." Or so. I was completely ignorant, you know, right. of how great. Obviously, it was just like in a completely other things. Like, yes, that is, it's a trio, it's a bass, there's no piano, but like, check it out. I mean, you right. know, Boo Boo's birthday or whatever, you know, and uh, so uh, then I, I kind of woke up to like how great for the lockdown. Um, to play with Ron and Al right as the lockdown was happening in the mid-March of last year. Great. And uh, I found myself, I was playing some kind of intro and um, I don't know, maybe just having those guys there or the spirit, whatever, or hearing Ron, I just started playing like... <laughs> yeah, right, Ron's you know, it, it, yeah. It was like we played, and I played it like something over that is another tune and... but. Uh, <laughs> Just like those guys, the sound of those guys together, man. There's oh, just yeah. something. No, it's one of those. So magical. It's like Ringo and Paul or something. <laughs> yeah. But that's, you know, that's that's the greatest thing, though, how he just, it inspires, it inspires you to, to, to relate to it, but be in the moment at the same time. It's not like you're trying to recreate anything. No. It's just an inspiration. Yeah, it was just a nod or whatever. Yeah, nod. You know? And, uh, of course, Ron was all... You know, all just over jumped it. right on. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember, is that what tune that yeah, is? Yeah, it's one of Ron's it's tunes. It's one of Ron's. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, you, uh, as I recall, so you were working with Joe back in San Francisco, right. like in so the early like, high school, maybe? No, or? no, no. I was already in college. Okay. But, but um, it's funny because I remember starting to play with Joe and then he, he said, oh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to New York to do the thing at the Vanguard. And it was that, it was wow. those records that, you know, um, with, with Ron yeah. and Al. Right. And, yeah. um, huh. you know, it's like, we weren't playing any of that material when we were playing. Right. And then he went and played all that, you know, kind of newer material that either Don or different people had recommended he didn't play, you know. Mm-hmm. And he came back, he said, oh yeah, we had a nice gig at the Vanguard. It's, you know, standards for him too, you right. know, which, it's just an amazing every time he would play that intro in by himself it mm. was like oh my god yeah i mean joe definitely did not need a piano player right um uh i got to play with him a few times and there was one time we were playing we were on the road actually with um dwayne burno in sure. spain and uh with a <laughs> of you know that he made with andrew hill and i was writing like these weird chords, you know, like the first chord <laughs> of the record, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, and anyway, Joe kind of leaned into me, leaned over to me and said, you know, if you could comp for me the way you comp for yourself. Nice. So I had to, you know, think about that. Right. And I, I mean, I wasn't thinking about, you know, <laughs> I'm going to do what See, I think the idea was like, leave space and right respond to what i'm doing i guess basically i don't necessarily need the chords behind right. me you know but we can fill you can fill in those spaces you know yeah so that was really pretty cool to but i love that about that generation particularly was that everything was the advice was almost always coded it's like you had to <laughs> You know, like go home or like wait weeks or wait years to figure out what they're talking about. <laughs> you know, as opposed to now where, you know, jazz education is to a point where it's very codified and, and you know, it's, everything is like you do this, you do this, and right. we'll see you later. Um, yeah, yeah. You had to think a bit and, and, and think of through your whole process. Through like your w- process. Yeah, right, yeah. right. That you have to filter this through your experience. You know, I'm not going to, yeah. Um, so that was, I mean, obviously an incredible. I had a similar thing with him where we were playing uh, Take the A Train. And I remember him <laughs> coming up to me and whispering, what's the second chord? And it's like, of course he knew. He was a great leader in that way, you know? He would make you think 
instead of just saying no do this or yeah. you know that's wrong or you know right right yeah he, he would ask he would ask questions that, yeah that's yeah yeah that was uh, kind of, uh that was my experience uh another kind of cool joe story when i did that first record i you know i had these kind of weird tunes but that was i mean i had uh, you know songs that were i mean basically pretty normal chord changes but i don't know if you ever saw him uh take notes on his lead sheets but every scale i think he had either written out blowing changes or or maybe over the i'm not sure exactly what it was but every scale was written in for every chord really so if it was like d flat major seven or b flat sus you know b flat c d e flat it was really? incredible yeah was i never like, saw that that's really surprising yeah it was all there i was like wow i mean that's uh, thorough <laughs> you know and yeah his process he used right? to talk about like it's sort of like oh yeah can this guy can spell you know right this thing you know? right he can spell it's a very literary cat you yeah. know and then it to me it came through for sure right right um no it was just obviously an incredible thrill oh man to to play with to play with a little bit with him and of course. Uh, yeah so <laughs> I don't know. Just, just great. To Thanks for inviting me to your home, man. Oh, uh, welcome, welcome. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're sort of neighbors. You know, live down the down the road a bit. Right. It's like twenty minutes away yeah. or something, Kingston, and um, hopefully we'll get to uh, hang a bit more once things settle down. And um, be great. You know, little maybe some little gigs are starting to flow in. You know, but it's tentative. Yeah, we're, um, I'm optimistic for the near future. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be different. I'm Wh curious, just kind of like what your experience has been with this pause. Um, <laughs> yeah. With life, you know. I mean, overall, I got to say, it's been really nice in a lot of ways. You know, I'm trying to focus more on that. And, and it's been amazing to be home with with Rebecca and Charlie and, and um, just sit home you know watch mm. the seasons change and just um have that home life which i've always had but it's always been interrupted right and so you know it makes me really want to somehow keep keep a part of that when everything gets back to normal you know so i mean the only you know it's been really hard to not play with other people and to um you know i just miss the people i, I i'm ar usually around a yeah. lot but it's really been kind of a beautiful year in so many ways too, and none of us luckily have gotten sick. So, yeah, yeah. Well, Larry, thank you, man. It's so great to uh, see you and play and have a little wine. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, I think we'll call it at that. And um, thank you all for checking it out and your support and. Um, uh who's yeah next? who's next oh yeah gregoire Marais is coming up amazing next week i'm so lucky and uh so um great harmonica player and uh he won't be able to wear a mask it might be tough for him to wear the mask yeah, yeah. so but uh <laughs> you know i think um he's he's pretty quarantined and uh i'll be masking up but uh <laughs> Anyway, thanks, Larry, thanks, and uh, thanks, y'all, and uh, we'll see you uh, next week. Bye for now. Where's the off button? I think it's over here. <laughs> <laughs>